My apologies. Okay, we are now recording. No worries. No worries. Okay. Do you want to ask your question again, Quentin? Absolutely. So the question that we see on the screen is why a podcast? What is driving you to start a podcast? What do you want to talk about? Why why do you want to record yourself? Any ideas? Anyone out there? So so for us, Quentin, it would be about um getting the names of the parks out there um letting people know what we do and also helping our companies uh become known um so so multi-purpose one would be to uh, the real estate side would be to keep people aware and and have companies aware of what we have available our spaces and the other one would be to help our companies get out there as well mm. That's an amazing idea because yeah. you've got so many companies uh, in incubation. You've clearly got a ton of topics you can look at. You can look at the companies themselves. You can uh, drill deeper and look at the whole industry that they're in. That's fascinating. So if you were to have a podcast, Gaylene, and it was focused on that, would it be your would it be trying to bring people more people to the parks or connect them to the parks and what you offer there? and how other people can utilize it and, and yeah. share ideas, et cetera. Yeah. That too, but also bringing in new companies that wanted to work with researchers and yeah. and new companies that wanted space to start with and, and things like that. Awesome, okay. Mm. How about you, Sarah? Have you ever wanted to start a podcast? <laughs> um, I don't think I would start a podcast for myself. Um, I have a little bit of experience um, with a podcast. The last company I worked at um, did have a podcast series that uh, I worked on. It was um, focused on the dry eye space. And so if I was to do a podcast with Western Research Parks, it would be, um, as Gailene mentioned, um, highlighting the parks and, and the companies here and yeah. Yeah, and I don't even know if it's the right thing for us, but I wanted to learn if it was going to be or not. And the mm. other thing is, you know, we'd be interested in because you're connectors we'd be interested in hosting or helping with your podcasts and and how um we could make it better for you as well so so there's you know there's we're open um you know i don't think i'm going to be a major podcaster and sarah's <laughs> probably not either but uh, we, it's just another tool that i was wondering about it's like you know yeah, you're yeah. right. So why why a podcast and what benefit would it bring us? And maybe it's not so much benefit to us, but it might be benefit to you folks and, and mm. others that do podcasts. Well, we absolutely appreciate it. <laughs> so thank you for thinking of us. And um, yeah, we definitely have some other things we'll talk about that for sure. uh, highlight why podcast is great for your business. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm here to learn more about it more than anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I, I wanted to talk about the first one, actually, just in, in response to what, what you uh, are mentioning and what you're thinking about is if if you the one of the quickest ways that you can establish yourself as a thought leader is if you are inviting people on. So you've got your incubators and then you've got an expert in the field or you've got someone in the chamber of commerce who can connect to that. Suddenly your network becomes more strengthened and people can see these different levels going up, sort of like the LinkedIn third connection, second connection, first connection. Mm -hmm. Um, it's great to share all of these expertise, insights, all of this um, perspectives to a wider audience. Um, and that audience just at the top of my head could be an internal audience, it could be an external audience, it could be a future prospective clients audience. So you could split the podcast into several thoughts, ideas and channels. Mm -hmm. So on a podcast, there's a, you're always interviewing a person or you have a panel, but there's always a focus theme, right? So, so you'd have to be strategic in rolling out those themes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the way, yeah, so our central theme is connect, connection and being a connector. And then we find people in that theme, but we have a series of questions that are broad enough that anyone can, you know, um, mm -hmm. in their own way answer and, and therefore keep our structured conversation aligned under the connectors theme, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. 
Yeah. And they're very, there's lots of different types of podcasts. I'm sure, I don't know if you have any favorites and, and we can talk about that too. Um, but you know, there's interview podcasts. There's sometimes panels, you said, there's people who just have a topic and just speak on a topic on their own. Um, I think they all have value. It's, um, we like having a third party. I think it makes the the dynamic really fun. And we come up with great insights on the three of the three of us, like, as they say, two, two people isn't just uh, two times smarter, it's 11 times smarter. So when you have three more three people in the room, you have that many more ideas. Um, so I think it's, uh, for us, we like having the guests because it's also building the community mm-hmm. and it's being able to connect people. Then when we have other guests and we hear something that, oh, wait, we can connect some dots for them. We know somebody in that industry we can connect you to. So that's the other value that we like as part of creating that community. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm also trying a different format with, um, another past podcast that I'm starting and it's under the banner of ELAN, English Language Arts Network. Mm-hmm. They want to bring out an EDI series, Equity, Diversity, Inclusion. And I'll produce this and I'll be one of the co-hosts. And then we've got a, so I'll be like the Im- immigrant coming to Canada voice. Um, we have an, another lady who's a, a lady of color. She's uh, more mature. She's going to be the born in Montreal voice. And then we're going to invite two guests who are experts in their field. So two black artists to talk about the black artist experience in Quebec, two Mm -hmm. indigenous people. One can be an expert, one can be an artist. And out of these podcast sessions, we're going to pull the resources and things so that it becomes EDI for artists, any resources for indigenous plus arts etc it'll have its little web page with all of these resources so you can think about formatting and and the mm-hmm. way it to be presented and we can mm-hmm. capsule we've thought about the structure of it so we can capsule it up into social media already or little sound bitey bits and then a longer episode for example mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then leveraging the podcast, I think, is a platform for networking, growing your your business, collaboration, et cetera. Um, obviously, there's a lot, you know, the potential is is exponential. And we know people that have their podcast as an add-on to their business. And so it was a way to get their messaging out more, to have more industry-leading conversations, um, that kind of thing. And we served it the opposite way. Like Quentin has his own business, the design co-op, which he did our design and our logos and things like that. Um, and as he mentioned, does a lot of the post-production and I do a lot of the front end stuff. So, you know, for us, we're now building a business around it. And as, as Quentin mentioned, like adding on these new webinars and getting our, our voice out, becoming thought leaders. Like we really want to be thought leaders out in the community. So, um, and then other people, they use it to share what they're doing for a business and then talk to other industry leaders in those areas. So, so kind of a amateur question what makes it a podcast is it the series or is it the content or is it the length or hmm. or is it's, it that you define it's it as the a format podcast? you're like a po- a podcast is supposed to be you're in a small environment a pod mm-hmm. where you're talking but you can reach a larger audience within your little environment and that's kind of what a podcast is essentially but uh, traditionally but- non-visual non-video um just something that you can listen to on the car while you're driving. Uh, basically, mm-hmm. radio, but it's yeah, yeah. taken yeah. out of the radio and you and in in its own format and in its own streams. Um, we that and that's a, that's a good point because when we started, we were preparing video and audio, mm-hmm. and we saw on YouTube, which is where we, we were posting and where I guess you'll be thinking of posting. Uh, we did not have a huge viewership. Like our listenership was like 20 times whatever our viewership was on YouTube Mm -hmm. for long form. But short form was really good on YouTube compared to like Instagram Reels or anything like that. So it's worthwhile thinking of a couple of different uh, ways to disseminate the information. Mm -hmm. There. Like we record on on average for about an hour, forty five minutes to an hour for per episode. But we have noticed when we've done shorter ones, when Quentin and I did some earlier ones, twenty minutes, twenty five minutes, you get a lot of hits on those. People, it's like a nice short amount of time, and people might it might be a quick car ride or you know a quick workout or whatever it might 
whatever it is. So attention, it's uh, attention span. Yeah. Yeah, for it's sure. Attention span. It, the mm -hmm. shorter ones keep people on for a bit longer. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, absolutely. So it's fun. It's it's good to play with that, I think, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, considering that you're thinking of a podcast, what sort of challenges have you come up against? Or or is this a, a, a new idea that you're New idea. Yeah, I just love I it. Just take it away <laughs> from the standpoint of somebody who knows does yeah. not know what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. So as we discovered um, and talking to other podcasters there's um when you start up there's a huge learning curve with the technical uh, knowledge the experience um getting all of this stuff sound engineered and produced and structured and little adverts and intros and outros and what platform do we put it on and what social medias do we send it out there and it was a lot and we had to do a lot of structuring and getting uh, discussions to figure out where we wanted our content to be seen and used. Uh, it took a while for us to figure out strategies uh, for marketing and then fill the content in with that because we started with a very broad umbrella and then we realized, well, we can't do everything as a two person team and also it, it sort of was watering down the message at the time. So we needed to refocus a little bit. Uh, we're volunteers. So this is limited time and resources uh, that we do. Uh, all of this is volunteer time. And, and we divide these tasks up between the two of us. So obviously, we try to figure out ways to make it more efficient, to automate. Um, you, yeah. And then, there, yeah, there was some difficult stuff in um, navigating the complexities of the podcast, like the the physical things, like one, one small example, we're creating our websites on Squarespace. And if Joe is logged in on Squarespace, I have a really difficult time logging in because it doesn't like us being in two geographic locations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> small little complexities, but they just annoy. And, and how do you get over that to have something more streamlined and, and efficient? Mm -hmm. What would you add to that, Joe? Uh, I would say everyone's po probably podcasting journey is a little bit different. I mean, I've seen people who just use their phones and just talk into their phone. There's no editing, there's no, you know, and it's mm. just very candid and that's the way they do it. And that's their style. Uh, Quinton and I are probably a little bit perfectionists and we like, <laughs> we, you know, I'm trying to outgrow that, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I- Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> we like uh we liked some structure we liked having a we like having templates we have processes in place both of us are have project management backgrounds so um for us having a process was we needed it especially being in two different locations we weren't coming to uh a studio together some people are doing it that way some people have people that they can pay and they do all of the production for them um as we as quinton said we're volunteers so it just depends what resources you have what access you have you know all those all those things so we try to make it we probably start off a little a little bit like with too much and then we started to like pare it down so we use google meet to record we know other people who use Riverside and apparently you can do all of the, um, your post editing within Riverside, well, all within the tool where Quentin's post-production takes a little bit more, you know, finagling with the different um, tools he's using. Um, but we try to make sure like at least our front end and some of the admin stuff and me getting the guests ready and our episode documents, all that stuff um, are, are prepared in time so that we're both ready for our episode recordings. Um, does it always work out great? Not sometimes. No, sometimes Quentin has to remind me of something and sometimes I have to remind him of something. So, but the most part, I think it's just, if you have a co-host too, keeping up that communication open and, and, and respecting each other, making sure you're on the same page as well. So that can be a challenge too, when you're working with other people. Hmm. I think it's a good thing to have two people though. Cause like, if this was all on my shoulders, I would be dropping uh ideas and balls left right and center so it's great to have that joe and i have meetings and and we keep just see how each other are each are, each other are working on our sides mm -hmm. of the projects really yeah. yeah definitely being adaptable helps for sure right yeah 
Okay. Any questions on, on those things? Oh, good. Okay. All righty. So I, I thought I would just split it up into um, some different solutions, and we've got some uh, templates to share that may be useful. So we'll have a look at the text solutions first. So uh, for tech solutions, tech challenges are setting up the equipment and having a good studio around you, how to edit audio files, and then how to get it out there and publish it. So Joe and I both use uh, microphones and headphones, and we decided to get the same uh, brands at the beginning, just so that there was some standardization. Uh, we try to tell our guests when they're coming on, hey, if you've got a quiet room, that's great. If you've got a mic, if you've got headphones, just general setup stuff. Um, we've tr we've moved, like Joe's moved rooms to record. I've moved spaces to record and set up different things just to make the quality a bit better. So you might need to find small spaces or um, fiddle around with it between recordings, perhaps. To edit audio files, I use um, Audacity, which is a free download, and it's really useful. It's got a bunch of um, automated things that you can just click on the whole audio file, and for example, it will cut all of the silences out in one click. Oh my god, that's amazing. When you've got like an hour-long file <laughs> to go through, and, and you just say to it, cut anything that's 0 0.02 seconds, ah. Oh, Suddenly, you've lost five minutes um, of empty space. It's great. Uh, for little video snippets and things, I like using Camtasia, which is a video software that you pay for. But we also do a lot on Canva. And uh, that's uh, we use a free version for that. Oh, OK, cool. Amazing. Um, CapCuts. Joe's used CapCut for social media snippets and things on a phone, mm -hmm. and you like it because it's mobile. I love it. It's uh, it's free, but then you know you get lots of ads and different things. I think it's a dollar a month. Um, but you'll see a lot of people on Instagram, if you follow Instagram, people use CapCut instead of using the Instagram. You'll see it kind of after their little video, it'll say CapCut. Um, but it's just nice because you can add as many videos and, and uh, photos as you like, where in Instagram, you're limited. And when you have like, there's a template, it's only like maybe 10 or something. Um, so at least in CapCut, you can create what you want, you can add your own music, you can add your own templates, and it's very easy to edit Yeah, a video. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We like ChatGPT and Grammarly to help us uh, take transcriptions and mm -hmm. cut them down into different bits of content. So we do a long description blurb of what the podcast was about. And then uh, that gets transferred into two shorter social media blurbs that go out on a Wednesday and a Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, Spotify for podcasters where we is where we upload uh, the final results. And then we RSS feed that out to as many things as we can. Pablo, I've I use that. There's a free version that you, you can connect three social media accounts, and so I uh, connect three of my accounts to that, and it's quite useful because you can send this out already. But you'll have your own uh, tool you're working with, and so then we try. It's, a, it's an automation, like for sending oh. out your posts. Yeah, so you can pre pre automate your social media posts using Pablo, and then you don't have to do them day by day or whatever. You can schedule them ahead of time. Yeah. And you can also go back into the calendar and just reuse posts. So like mm -hmm. if this is a monthly webinar, we'll just go back to that post and reshare it out as mm -hmm. it's already done. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we tried Notion uh, to, as a first website um, idea and automation idea. And it's good, but we uh, end up, ended up going with Squarespace and paying mm -hmm. for that website. Mm -hmm. It's easier for no, both of us to use. Notion is cool, though, because it does have a lot of different functionality where you can store your content, you can create, you know, marketing pages, you can do different things with it that you can share with other people as well. So it has a lot of interesting um, capabilities. Mm. Mm. Okay. Next here. So these are just some of the mm -hmm. uh, technology solutions and what they look like. So this is the Audacity one for um, audio that Quentin uses. 
Camtasia, <laughs> uh, Spotify for podcasters. Spotify. This is what Publer looks like for scheduling. Notion. And, and what's cool about all these tools is they pretty much all of them now have their own AI add-ons like that are, I'm sure you've been seeing that. And we use Canva a lot for doing our social media posts. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, if you're familiar with AI and we're we're all about it, we love using it. I it's um, it really does help streamline things and your content and creating uh, reusable content as well. Mm -hmm. So this is a free template. <laughs> so we'll share <laughs> this. We'll share this document with you after, and then these link directly to the template. So this was a project plan template that we created when we were starting everything from the very beginning of like, what do we need to do to start a podcast? And so we thought this might be helpful for others if they were at that very beginning stage. Um, initially, right when Quentin and I were starting, I went to a podcasting convention in Las Vegas, and uh, it was basically like all the top podcasters. It was you. There was workshops. You got to talk with other people in the industry. Um, it was just. It was such a. It was such a great way to start things off, just because I learned a ton, and I was so excited, like coming back and sharing everything, with Quentin. So um it even just you know i took a lot of things away from that and we were able to put them into our project plans to come up with a whole plan to launch our show so mm -hmm. so i'm just gonna are we gonna have a look at that oh sure i'm sorry yeah there. no no worries so i'm just sharing that link in the chat and you should be able to grab a copy of it thanks quentin no worries um are we gonna share the project plan templates and just quickly go Sorry. through it. Yeah, I just Sorry. need to go back. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, Has this it is on a new I have it now. Okay. okay, cool. Okay. Uh, so yeah, thank you for joining us on the template. So if you want to um, think about it, you can, you can, these are the things that we found useful some of it is good to start up the podcast. Some of it is um, good to start up the marketing strategies or the engagement with the, your clients or you know your your hosts, your guests. Uh, and then some you you could use and then just delete. And then there's other things where we've separated it into different subheadings. So how to reach out to the audience, how to reach out to client uh, guests, how to launch it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we can I reuse think this is a great template for any sort of, yeah, like yeah. you could really, I mean, it's great for podcasts, of course, it's that, that's what it was made for, but you could really use that for anything, right? You can reuse mm -hmm. it for, totally. for sure. Like we had our whole launch strategy from when we were going to like originally launch our first episode and we did like a countdown to get the excitement going um you know we had everything we wanted to do for guest preparation and the emails that we wanted to send out and um uh show topics and content that we wanted to start yeah so we had like we even have legal stuff on here we wanted to look into so yeah covers pretty much everything yeah that's a lot of conversations and a lot of research mm -hmm. and a lot of chatting with other podcasts and a lot of joe and i trying to figure out what we want and, and mm -hmm. where we think it can go yeah mm -hmm. okay so we're going to jump over to our human mm -hmm. solutions i think that was a good segue with uh what quentin said about talking to other podcasters um we were joining a community I, I don't know if quentin has other communities he joins but we were sort of joining a community here and there and then um i just sort of stopped i just felt the times never worked for me in some of these podcast communities but um i definitely keep in touch with a lot of other podcasters and it is nice to share ideas and you always hear about what they're doing and what's the latest and uh, i always usually pick up something yeah. i have a quick question <clears throat> um so who would be the most popular podcaster in Canada or the US or worldwide? And what is their topic? What is their subject? Oh, oh dear. <laughs> That's such a good, um, hmm. And it's going to be tough because I don't know if the people I follow are going to continually be in my algorithms as like the top, you know what I mean? Because mm. who I follow might be different than Quentin. I, I'm going to say there's, 
what I typically see a lot of, even if I just go on YouTube or something, who pops up a lot for me is Dr. Andrew Huberman. Um, he's blown up in podcasting the past couple of years. Um, I know one of the biggest podcasts or the top one that was rated one of the top was Smartless. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of that one? But it has Jason Bate. It's three actors. It's like Jason Bateman, uh, Will Arnett, and Sean Hayes. And they basically just interview celebrities. <laughs> but <laughs> it's funny. It's witty. They have a huge following. Um, I know there's some um, business and economy uh, as well that are are quite popular. And Quentin and I listen to very different types of podcasts too. So um, a lot of mine are on relationships and personal growth and, you know, that sort of stuff. And I think he listens to more um, world issues and <laughs> 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 so, yeah. Yeah, we do listen to different things. I think for what, what makes it, popular is it's either going to come from the people that are hosting or on the show like three already famous actors yeah. like oh my god if we could imagine if we could have a monthly segment with someone someone famous you know mm -hmm. so it's either that their name is pulling in the stuff or the guest that you're having is pulling in the audience um or, and the then, topic. or it's the topic and that's like at the top of my mind, I'm thinking the manosphere and people like Jordan Peterson is. Oh yeah, he just popped up. I looked popular. this up. <laughs> yeah, he's on the top, one of the top. Yeah. Because he started out with good ideas, but then he sort of like got sucked into this very male, masculine, macho-dominated audio sphere that you know we we tend to think of as toxic masculinity and all that but there's a huge following of young men that are going after people like that as well so it's it's definitely the messaging as well yeah sure i see three top here canadian podcasts uh the daily the joe rogan experience which is funny, he's, he's out of funny. The US, but yeah. i know uh dateline nbc and the huberman lab which is the one i was talking about oh, so. that's so interesting mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. a, a Manosphere guy, a science mm -hmm. person, a political, and a political um, economy. That's very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So other, I mean, human solutions, I think this part, you know, it comes down to, well, uh, quite a few things. Like for us, we're about connection. We're about connecting people. We highlight the importance of relationships and human connection as well. Um, so whatever your niche market is or whoever your, your audience you're trying to reach, I think it's really honing in on your message and, and helping your audience to engage with it and engage and understand what you're about and, um, and understanding what they're looking for as well. That part I find is a challenging one. You know, I, I'm out in the world in the day and I talk to people and they're like, oh, I love your show. I love your show. But then getting the audience engagement through messages and stuff is tougher. So I sometimes we're like really trying to reach like what are people looking for and are we on the right track? Um, so trying to get constant audience engagement is um, I would say it's a challenge, but it's it's important to the show and, and important to the messaging. Mm. Uh, structuring your content. Uh, again, we talked a little bit about that, but we kind of, we have an intake form that we ask our guests to fill out very high level. It's like they fill in, uh, a bio about themselves, if they're aligning their podcast with any kind of releases, a book release, a, you know, something they're doing with their work. Um, and we just kind of hone in on those few topics, but really it's a, it's a candid conversation and we find the less that we get too, you know, detailed. I think it's, it's good. Or we don't get too stressed about it. It's just a nice conversation with somebody and being curious and learning and um, just keeping that real open mindset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the maintaining consistency was a big one um we we had a, a few goes at this to figure out who who would be best to take which section of responsibilities and and how to keep this rolling out so every two weeks we had an episode published and we try to ramp it up to once a week and we got that a few of those episodes done but then 
we realized that the human side between Joe and Quinton was getting frazzled and, and stressed out. And we we're like, oh no, no, this, it's, got, it's really important that we're uh, tight knit co-hosts because uh, we're the connectors. We've, we've got to be on an even keel and talk about mm -hmm. that. So we, we just realized uh, with us, we can't do a weekly consistent hour long thing. So we'll come back to that idea, I'm sure. Uh, but for now, yeah, we'll, it's not our thing, I guess. Hey, <laughs> yeah, and, that, and I said to Quentin, if we had a whole team doing all our production and we just showed up <laughs> for the episode, that'd be what great. A pleasure. You know, maybe that's our future, <laughs> that, that's the future of the connectors. But yeah, for now, we're a two person show, yeah. Uh, exactly. mm -hmm. uh, the confidence and self doubt, it did take a while to because we're both sort of like nitpicky project plan -y. we like to go line by line and make sure everything's ticked off etc cetera, etc cetera. and we've got this idea you know that good is fine but we're we want this thing to be better than good so we've learned how to um support each other say that was an awesome thing that you did there i like that that was great or or be honest and say let's just cut this down i don't think that's working oh that didn't go so well but it's more it was more about us completing things and getting them out there and getting that on the roll and i think mm -hmm. that once we'd crossed the sort of 10 episode mark we were we felt okay we can do this we're confident we can get this done that's okay yeah it takes a while for you to not cringe at your own voice when you're re-listening to the episodes for sure yeah. <laughs> so that, that took a little while but um uh yeah it definitely feels a lot you know simpler now i think we feel a lot more confident uh for anyone i think that's getting started if it's something new it's just practicing like i said pick up your phone do like one one minute reel a day on instagram and just kind of get used to speaking and not worrying about editing out what you're saying or just practicing it um i was doing these mindset monday videos and i would sometimes re-record them like five different times while i'm just like out on a walk <laughs> you know and and it's 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 it was affecting my walk and I was getting annoyed. I'm like, I'm just gonna do one, one and done. And if it's not perfect, it's fine, right? Uh, but it's using your voice. And I think everybody has a voice. That's the nice thing about podcasts is it's a platform to use your voice. So uh, if you're struggling with that or you want to start speaking more, I think it's a great place to start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any questions or thoughts on the sort of human side of podcasting? Okay. Awesome. And then process and time management. So Quinta and I are big on <laughs> process and time management. So we could talk a little bit about that before we uh, share our template. Um, but as we mentioned, we both like to organize. We we wanted to make sure that we were structured enough that we knew what we were both doing. And um, Quinta and I have created everything from like an episode document to follow for each episode that we use. That's where we put all our links. Once Quinton does all his post-production, he puts the links in there so I can view it. Um, he adds any little snippets from like the clips from two or three clips from each episode as well that I can put on social media. Um, and we just have like a very, I wouldn't say it's rigid, but it's, it's structured. It's a really good structured process. And we typically get everything done between the two of us, which is really nice. So, um, I think process for if you're working the way that we are having a process really helps to to keep things in line uh, especially when you have a team of uh two or more mm -hmm. yeah and it's like time based so we we have a deadline every uh second friday an episode goes out so um even if there even if there are missed steps along the way one of us is going to pick it up and make sure that we get that thing released you know so yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I can so just, share. Yep, go for it. So. I got it. So I'll yeah. just show you what our guest list template looks like. So basically, I start a new one for each year, a new tab at the bottom. Uh, Quentin and I will reach out to different people, maybe through LinkedIn, or we have referrals of people that come to us. Sometimes the guests that we've had on the show give us a bunch of names of people. So we just start listing them, where they're located, um, what industry they're in. 
uh, if something is aligning with their business for release. And then all of these little drop downs, like the these ones along here, they're all uh, action items. So basically, I've sent out the link to book it in the Google Calendar for the pre record meeting. We've had the pre record meeting, we've sent out our second email so that they know what the interview de details are. Um, and then our third email is after we record, we send them out their release date with um, assets uh, to the guests. So assets being um, any of the clips that Quentin created, any of the social media posts, maybe a couple of our logos, they'd have access to a Google folder, um, the guest would so that they can share it with their PR people, with their communities, et cetera. And we're noticing that has a really value add uh, that our, um, our guests really like that aspect too, to have something they can take away and share. And it kind of is a lead up to, and we get excitement going about the podcast before an episode release. Mm. Mm -hmm. awesome. Any questions? Any questions on that? All righty. So this this section is just um, how can we uh, float above the podcast idea and think of where what directions it can go in. So uh, this is sort of where we did our thinking a few months ago, and now we've started actioning a few of the things that will lead to more audience expansion or more brand authority, more client engagement, networking, and uh, reusing content. Mm -hmm. So some things that we've been doing are we're going to launch a website. And on this website, it's going to have um, some different sections that will encourage a person to either speak to me, speak to Joe, uh, join for a collaboration or a partnership, join for the podcast. We're going to have um, a, a section that will be a memberships where you can sign up and you can get extra information. So we've found uh, speakers, previous guests who ranked very highly with the audience we're going to bring these people back for short little seminars of like four episodes of 20 minutes each. And then this will be uh, in a Patreon or in a membership section. So you'll pay five bucks a month and you'll have these extra um, insightful bits. Mm -hmm. um, what else are we doing, Joe? Uh, well, I think it's just in general, like using your podcast to leverage other things, as, as Quentin mentioned, um, you know, even even thinking about things like networking, like I've met a lot of our guests through networking in London. Um, Quentin's met some of our guests through projects and other things he's working on in, um, in Montreal. Uh, I think it's a great way for us both to really get to know our community and the people that are in our community and then also share some of those stories within the podcast. So I love that idea. Um, we use LinkedIn a lot. I love utilizing LinkedIn for, for connecting with new people. Um, as we said, making the guest experience important. So I think that's a great thing for your guests to leave feeling like they had a relationship with you and they're gonna continue that relationship and you're gonna build on that. Um, what else? I think it's a great way to share, um, in, you know, industry leading insights and provide you know valuable content for people that what might attract other people that you didn't expect so sometimes we have people reach out to us that were like oh wow we didn't know that they were listening or even the younger generation i'd love to get more of our the younger generation listening to our podcast because i think that might be a nice focus especially since we do focus on human connection um and the younger generation is so focused on technology and looking in their phones right so you know there's just lots of opportunity i think based on what you're doing of how you can expand um expand further um yeah we repurpose a lot of content uh we're going to start doing newsletters so taking the content that we have and making new letter newsletters out of that so just keeping people engaged along the way and i think uh we just want to find the right amount of engagement that's not bombarding people with too much i don't know if you've experienced that where you have you know you get 20 emails from one <laughs> from one person uh, each week. And for me, that's for us, that's too much. So we're, we're going to play with finding that right amount of engagement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
any other questions or thoughts on outside of the box? No. Okay, so marketing, oh, yeah. I think I had left this in from our last, <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's a good point. So marketing yourselves and podcasting. Um, we've ebbed and flowed with the marketing aspect. We had somebody on our team that was doing our social media for a little while. So we had a third person, which was really nice. And she was also doing it out of her own uh, volunteer time. Um, she was great because she was really trying to get us to uh, showcase a little bit more about who we are, not just about the podcast or the guests, but like get to know Quentin and Joe. She was always on us to like try new things. So I did notice some of our engagement had gone up when she was doing more of the posting. And then through the summer, our engagement had gone down because we um, we took a bit of a break. So uh, I, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you speak, Quentin, because you're more on the marketing side of things. But you know, it's it's interesting. It's an interesting challenge. I don't love marketing. For me, I feel like that part is so like it could be icky. And I think for some people it is. So yeah. Wow, thanks for passing the ball over to me like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think marketing is icky. <laughs> well, it can feel icky because like I said, yeah. when you're from with too much information or it's sell, sell, sell. I don't yeah. I don't love that. How do you get around that that where it's just, you know, sharing who you are and it's relevant information, but it's not icky. Yeah. Yeah, I know. There's I know. You've got to do it. And I think making it organic and and okay, so we've thought about marketing in terms of pushing the guest forward. So there's a Wednesday release about, hey, th this is coming up on Wednesday. There's a Friday reminder that says, this is the guest. But uh, we have tried to do it on uh, with ourselves to more personal marketing. It's tough. There's, there's a reason why I'm behind the microphone and I do the sound <laughs> engineering and I'm not the front person, you know, I, I need to make a more effort about that. Um, but yeah, it's icky because, I don't know if you know, Joe, but we get bombarded with up to 5,000 media images and adverts and things a day. So yeah, it's just mm -hmm. exhausting. It's like, and and so I think the approach that we've taken is to try to be very personable and just show the human side and not go too squeaky clean and, you know, supermodel advertising or influencer type. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's a balance. It's a balance. Definitely a balance. Yeah. <laughs> How have you found uh, Gailing? Because you have, like, you send out these emails for uh, the Western Research Parks, and you have like the connection corner. How often do you send them? And do you find it's enough marketing and engagement, or do you feel like there's more you need that needs to be done? I think Sarah's balanced it quite well, like with the quarterly um, newsletter and the invites and the lists, and she keeps track of who takes themselves off the list and who unsubscribes. But what we're missing is our, um, we're just in the process of getting our website revamped. So we're waiting on that so that we can launch. And so mm. we can start launching spaces that are available to you know fill our research goal our real estate goals and then how do we build innovation in the park that's another so we have a whole bunch of different strategies and they all take on different marketing and different social media like you know yeah. we can't um startup companies you know it's it's word of mouth in london through the university through the professors linkedin it's more like space available um announcement things like that so Sarah might be more, um, she definitely keeps track of the metrics, but, and uh, yeah, but, you know, different topics, different venues, you kind of, do we place them, do we place everything perfectly all the time? Probably not, but, you know, you, you just, you just put it out there and, and hope for the best and hope for increased subscription yeah. and increase. But for us, it's, it's all about, and, and this is a question back to you folks. So we do it to gain attraction for the parks. Mm -hmm. We gain it for people to know the parks. So, and I'm, do you folks do it to bring activity to a business or is it more personal? Mm. That's a really good question. So it started as a personal project 
Joe had this idea of starting this podcast and she put out a call to a group of uh, change management people and uh, a couple of us answered that call. And when we embarked on this, it was qu very quickly whittled down to Joe and myself. Mm -hmm. And so, cause I've got a bunch of marketing experience and web stuff before, I was saying, look, if it's going to be just the two of us, let's do two years of just awareness and engagement. We're just getting on ourselves out there. And then energy is going to come as a result of that. And some energy is going to snowball in a certain direction. So like we've discovered that people want to know about how to put themselves out there as a small team and all that. So these webinars, webinars have come as a result of that discussion. We're also seeing that, for example, we could start an event arm and maybe Joe could do some events in London and I could do some events in Montreal because there's energy for face-to-face -face stuff. So we've sort of done it a bit backwards where we started it as a personal thing, understanding that a podcast has got low R ROI and that we're going to move in the direction of the positive energy and the engagement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what would so, you so you're not directing it's not i i guess yeah so the business person in me always want to say does this make you money does this cost you money does this bring money to you know or bring business to you on some other level hmm. so that's a great question so to answer it from that level my design shop the design co-op produces the connectors podcast it's one of our long-standing clients that you know we're constantly doing this stuff and like oh my god that's amazing we've doing this we're doing that here's another episode coming out so no the podcasts podcasts traditionally have very low roi but it's what extends from that that then becomes mm -hmm. valuable so when people go go, go on uh, stuff that i've done they can go oh wow he does this 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 okay cool but you weren't expecting an ROI, right? Or, or it, do your followers sign up and pay? Or how do you, how do you make? Yeah, we're not, there any money? Podcast, yeah. <laughs> we're we're getting that's that's what we're getting to now is we're realizing okay we've got a strong message and we've got something that people need. How are we going to format it in different ways? So, like, who that, wants to pay for it, right? Yeah. Right. So I've got a friend who pays five bucks a month for a podcast that's um, this Jungian life, and it's three young um, psychologists, and she loves their conversations. She pays five bucks to have this very in-depth conversation around archetypes and structures and patterns in our life. We need to find that for us. We need mm -hmm. a, so is it going to be the, now, what's the archetype? So structures Sorry. and patterns, did you say? Yeah. Pattern or did you mean patterns? So, patterns. 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 Yeah. yeah. So oh, patterns, not patterns. Okay. Yeah. Patterns. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Carl, Carl Jung, like a hundred years ago, he analyzed all these dreams and things and he mm -hmm. found all of these archetypes that we can, uh, associate ourselves with or can be at different times. Mm -hmm. So, you know, wife mother crone which are some female examples for example you know um yeah so it's fast it's fascinating podcast by the way <laughs> yeah yeah I, I love it but yes but we need to find our way of um now incentivizing and getting mm -hmm. that so that's part of our website like as well we're going to each have our offerings of uh like consultation time with us and then if people want to even learn how to do a podcast we would expand further on these things and do like a very in-depth dive with them that might be one way if you hit a certain amount of subscribership you also can get people who sponsor you so right. that's, when that's you where all, i was going that's Are when you, you get all the it? commercials and all those things that pop up on the podcast that get really annoying um or like quentin said you can you have like a patreon account and somebody pays for your podcast so we wanted to do like a series a spin-off series or something of the connectors that was very focused on something we could always try it there and see if anyone will pay for it um yeah there and again as we said we did it a little bit backwards we flipped it didn't start as our business it's now turning into our business and quentin's leveraging it for his and i'm starting to find ways that i can leverage it for what i'm diving into as well so and it's usually yeah. associated with 
with an app, right? You you buy the app or or, or, or you listen or like when I <clears throat> so <clears throat> I don't know if that's more like I have different apps that are completely audio, but I don't think they're considered to be podcasts, right? Hmm. So like an audible, like an audible account or something, or Audible or Spotify. Or no, iTunes, Spotify is music to me, but okay. but I, I I'm guessing is how do you? I guess I, the question is: Do people that have regular podcasts do they have their own app? Oh, I, like they're uh, all. No, usually, you're listening on a platform. So when Quentin was talking about the platforms before that he uploads to, that's Spotify, iTunes. Like that's where we put our podcast. Is all those those places? So, uh, so I'm just going to give you an example, like um, sure. which is a far out example, but uh, the app Halo. It's a it's a number of podcasts, and it's a prayer thing, and you know, meditation thing. So, so is that considered to be podcast or is that more of a. Okay. Oh. That's a really good uh, question. So this thing feeds you like a daily meditation and it gives you notifications. And there's somebody and you on have there a membership. And, audio and you can change, change the voice. And so is that more, that's more of an app. Thing, that's an so app thing i guess you could have an app you could probably create your own app that might be your business app right and maybe that's where instead of your website or maybe a both i don't know but that's where you send people for like go to the app mm -hmm. for more information on this or you can listen to our podcast there or i'm sure yeah so yeah. When you, so when you direct people to your podcast it's on a platform yes yeah. but, right but, yeah so yeah so we, we we realized that we were we didn't have that polished look or that finalized look of a business because we only had audio platform stuff and social media around that so we were like okay we got to get this website out so we've got a platform that can house everything and that can be built um so that we can build in courses or build in a membership section or uh, yeah so that could be an app but now it's mm -hmm. a website yeah. yeah so we've gone yeah. the website yeah. version correct yeah. So, so there are people that have podcasts that have their own app. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, have have that's that. great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, not no, I'm asking. Project. I'm asking. Uh, yes, definitely. So you're okay. talking about Halo, and I know another one that's called Calm. That's Calm. similar. Yeah. Thing. Tons mm -hmm. of meditations and all that. So that, I believe. Um, what would you classify that as? Is it a platform? Well, it's a wellness it app? app or something, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Is it, is it, is is there, app are there podcasts in there? Yeah. So if I logged into that, I can see if I can. I would call it an. I would call it an app because you physically ap applicate with the thing. You you move, tell it what you want. Like, I'll I'll wake up and I'll be like, I want a vigorous 30 minute uh, yoga followed by a calming 10 minute nature based meditation and i can click 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 and then i put my phone up and i do my yoga following a little video and an audio and then i sit and i do my meditation but that's not podcast it's like a multiple media stitched yes. together mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. i as the user decide what to do whereas a podcast is more just like a radio show it lasts its time from when you press play and until when you drop off or uh it ends but that calm app i mean they could add to it conversations they, on meditation no, or something and they started they start a podcast and use the app as a way to listen to it so that they is another. have because you can go in and listen to conversations with like if i if i go into the calm i don't even know if i have it anymore Hmm. But they have uh, Discover, right? Yes. Okay. So your Discover is like. So, okay, so you know what that probably is, is that's probably they give an option to instructors like yoga and meditation instructors like, hey, join our app. We've got subscribers already. We've got marketing already. We've got this. So you can go and you can start as a, a teacher 
putting out your content under an app that is specific for that mm -hmm. content as opposed to being yet another yoga teacher online with a website. <laughs> yeah. So, then, so what would you call another yoga teacher online? Um, she has a video. She has audio. So it's not a podcast. So what is that? I'd call that a, like a, a webinar or a class. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like so to be yoga an with Adrienne. I'm just trying to further define podcasts. Like it's always audio um, and you have a channel or something. Yeah, so you, you do what's called RSS feeds. So you, mm -hmm. you upload it to one central thing. And yeah. then you tell all of these other things, hey, we've got this podcast and it updates, da, 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 da. So whenever we upload something, it automatically feeds out to those. So we don't physically put our podcast on iTunes and Google Podcast and Spotify. We just upload it to Spotify and then it gets distributed yeah, okay. up to all these other channels. And how though? Like, do do I search on Spotify for podcasts on connectivity will you pop up yeah I mean, you'd have, yeah uh, hopefully, well, hopefully can... depending on how well we've keyworded it okay. um, so let's yeah. say you knew a guest that was on yeah you might you might type in the connectors john brady you know or th or the connectors podcast if you know the title or connection podcast and all of these should um push you in our direction mm -hmm. if we've done our seo properly right can you do that that's a good question though like can you do the search on so if i go to pa, i'm just going to do a little test right now while we're wrapping we're kind of wrapping up here um so if i type in podcasts on connectivity in while i'm in spotify mm -hmm. uh, it'll come up with a whole bunch of different podcasts that have the word connect in it is what it does so um, yeah, I don't know if your search engine optimization could ever be perfect in Spotify because there's so many people. With no, so you'd want to know the yeah. name of the podcast. To what? That's what I yeah. find is possible. So, you want to know the name of the podcast. So it's double hard for you folks to market then because you you almost have to market direct. Um, in a way. Yeah, yeah, which is why we keep trying to build the audience engagement yeah. and why we're going to send out by newsletter and mm -hmm. just encourage people to to give us their information so that we can reach out. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've learned yeah. lots. Thank you. Great questions. No worries. Thanks for joining. Thank you very much for you spending your time with us. <laughs> <laughs> Any last burning questions? I'm good, but Sarah, do you have anything? Sarah, no. Okay, well, thanks for joining. If you've got um, any questions, if you want uh, to share like anything else, just send us an email. If you want another template, we've probably got something in our folders that can help you. Uh, if you want to talk about it, like once your website is done and, you, and you're a bit further along the way, then uh, Joe and I would be very happy mm -hmm. to help you out. Yeah, like Thanks. I'm thinking in terms of once we get our website done, you know, maybe we could do a profile of the week and it could be you folks or something, right? Yeah, okay. absolutely. That would be amazing. That, yeah. That's where I was going with this. Like, how do I get you connected? How do I get people into you? And so, you know, we, we could put up this and say, you know, um, yeah, we could promote it somehow. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that, Gaylene. Um, as I mentioned too, we're going to have some other webinars coming up. So I don't know if what our future ones, if they'd be better suited or this one. Absolutely. I'd like to be able to reach, reach, you know, a broad audience for like a broader audience for who might we be interested. We could plan that. You know, we could plan that and let you know. And if, and well, you can plan it. You can tell us, oh, we have the perfect connector um, podcast that we want to share with you. And this.